Hello and welcome to the Trial On Podcast. Most questions we've ever received are, I think it's over 50 questions we've got today. So that's really good to see. We're going to get straight into it. I'm your host, Bo. This is the so-called people's host. I don't know who calls him it. I think he just walks around his house calling it. Rumor has it he demands his girlfriend calls him the people's host. Is that true? I don't demand it. It's expected, though. It's expected. All right, let's go. Right, let's yes. get into it. All right, so we got a few. Con- uh, so we got a few questions. Sorry about the um, Paul Vaughan incident and and what's going to happen with him, and you know if they're being a bit too harsh in him and, and whatnot. So shout out to Maxi Bob four eight zero one, Jeremy Newton underscore ten, Tyler Wall M Wall sorry three, uh, Deacon Kelly nineteen, Matt Lee underscore twenty one zero seven, Jet Pritchard and M B. O double C O zero. They were all okay. just asking what's going on with Paul Warren. Um, where is he going to go? Is it too harsh? All that kind of stuff. I'm going to start just with the incident. Eight games. His contract's been <clears throat> torn up. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty gnarly for mine. But what I will say is it's the second time he's done it, breached the COVID rules. Now, him going on NRL 360 last night, good on him for fronting up. Like, that must have been so hard to do, to know that you've done the wrong thing and go on there and copy punishment. I know the NRL is still investigating if there were other people at the house, and if that comes out that there was, that's just nuts because then they would have breached the bubble, then it's a two-week quarantine, then it becomes a whole different story. As for Paul Vaughan, people saying, do they think he'll get a contract? I think he'll walk into another club. Well, let's be honest, the NRL is a business. And his price is going to go so far down. I can see him going to a Roosters or something and rehabbing his entire career. Where are you at? Oh, you know what? I think it's fair, the punishment. Like, come on. Like, obviously, there was already enough heat around the club with that Jack DeBellin thing. Just fin- they just finished, actually, the Jack DeBellin um, incident. And then this comes up. So it's not a good look for the club. And I can understand why they took kind of strong stance. So... Good on the NRL for coming out and being strong on it. I will say, you you brought up Jack DeBellin. I talked to Tori about it um, not last night, not before. I said, this bloke, that that's that's the worst thing of this whole thing. Him, that club, the Dragons, and if I was a Dragons fan, I know you like to stand by your players, but seriously, that club stood by him through that whole thing, backed him 100%, paid his wages, let him come to training, were there for him no matter what, then they get through that. And then he comes to this and he goes and lies to their faces. Mm. The first opportunity he gets to give back to that club and he lies to their face, that's disgusting. I'd be getting him out. Seriously, like the, the amount they went through with him and the probably the hit the club took, um, just their perception to the public and they still stood by him. And now this has come out and he lies to him and goes and what, hides under the bed? Yeah. I think that's disgraceful. Like, Anyone else, I know they've all had their issues. Paul Vaughan, yeah, he gets the brunt of it, but that's so low from Jack DeBellin, I think. Yeah, yeah I've seen a few comments on, online saying they should sack DeBellin and Corey Norman. I, I, I see the argument for sacking DeBellin after that. Like, he gets the one chance he gets, to be honest, and he goes in and talks to the club and lies to their face and says he was walking his dog in the area instead of being at the party when he's hiding under the bed. So... Mm. I think that's disgraceful, to be honest. Yeah, it's slow. Um, as as far as we, what what what's um, next for Paul Vaughan? I think he'll. I don't think he'll walk straight to another club right away. I think maybe give it a give it a year. Yep. Maybe. I think he will get another NRL contract though. He's too high quality. Oh yeah. Well, he's playing for New South Wales. Did he play for Australia? He played for Australia, didn't he? Yeah, I can't remember, but he's 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 high quality. I I reckon if he went to the Roosters. Like, he'd be on not, not much money. He went to the Roosters, got in that system. I think he'd play really good footy. Mm, yeah, all right, sweet. All right, now we also got a few questions about Mitchell Moses going into Origin, um, like how he'll do, what we think about it. So, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. got... um. This is a huge test for Mitchell Moses, obviously, in his career. I know he played for Australia in the nines in the World Cup, but this is, this is a different beast. This is State of Origin, the pinnacle of our game. I think for New South Wales, it's a really, really smart move. You bring him in in a game three where there's not a lot of pressure on him. Like, they've already wrapped the series up. So, if he comes out there and plays well, then you've got a ready-made replacement for Nathan Cleary if he ever goes down. So, I really hope he kills it, but I don't see the downside here for New South Wales. Mm, yeah, there was um, there was also a few questions talking about if they would if 
sorry, we would rather than pick Reynolds and Walker in the um, six and seven. Well, I was I was of the thought that they should. If when when I heard Lua was out, I thought yes, but I don't see the the harm in picking Mitchell Moses. What do you <coughs> oh, bless me, <laughs> Jesus, bless you. What do you think? <coughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ, where'd that come from? I don't know. I was just I was crawling under the bed. Is that the people sneeze? That's the people sneeze. Um, what do I what think? Do think? I think. Yeah, I'd rather have Mitch Moses there. Oh, man. Or Piercy. Yeah. Someone named Mitchell. <laughs> Someone named Mitchell. Yeah, but... Um, no, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Gould brought up something, that brought up a good um, point that Mitch Moses and James Tedesco used to play at the Tigers together, so they'd already yeah. have quite a bit of um, chemistry there. So. Well, I thought, I thought Adam Reynolds, Cody Walker, and then you got Damian Cook... Cam Murray, Latrell Mitchell, like that's yeah, that's, that's a pretty big nucleus, nucleus right there. So that's where I was leaning towards. But Mitch Moses, Jack Whiten finally gets his opportunity at six. I think that's probably overdue. Like Daily M six, um, Daily M player of the year last year. So good to see him get a run in his preferred position. I think mm-hmm. he's paying a dollar and one cent to kick the ball out on the full. I would load up if if Sportsbet give me a market for that. I would load up. I reckon he will kick the ball out on the full in State of Origin three at Newcastle. That's breaking news, by the way. It's it's in Newcastle. Everyone will know that by now. But it will be in Newcastle. Good for them. <clears throat> yeah, good for you. All right, right. Yeah, we'll just get into the rest of the questions then. So we got one. Let's from go. Logan Cooney. Can you live stream game three reactions? Because game two you couldn't. Like, can you two be on Zoom? Now, I think Danny's going to be at work. I'm right there. I don't know. What day is it? Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Not this one. Yeah, no, Not today. A, I'll be working. Yeah, I thought so. Um, look, in the future, we want to be live for pretty much all the games. Like, I want to be able to do that on YouTube. Um, we're only just starting out here, guys. Like, This is what we've not even been doing this for a year, Danny, <clears throat> I think. Nearly a year. I think next month. Nearly a year. Next month. Next year. month's a year. So watch out for that. But we're still learning. We're still growing. We're, that's obviously a plan down the track to uh, go live for the games and have us just talk through the games and stuff. But just keep supporting us. We'll get there. We're still just trying to grow here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Jordan Kensiani, uh, do you guys really think... Oh, no. Never mind. That's one of the, that's one of the uh, Mitch Moses questions. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Maxi Bob 48101. Penrith will miss the eight or finish eighth without starting halves. Agree or not? I think um, if they were both out for the whole year, they would struggle. But I think most teams would struggle if both their halves out were out for the whole year. I think Luai's only out for two or three more weeks, Cleary four <clears> or five. So they might drop a couple through there, but I still think they're a short uh, top four finish. Uh, oh, hold on. I had a look at the um, injury warehouse, the chemist warehouse injury list or whatever. Casualty are we sponsored by Wait, are we sponsored by chemist warehouse? I hope. Well, can we be chemist warehouse? <laughs> well, drop their name because we're not we're not plugging their name. All right, yeah. The casualty warden nrl.com. Um, and it said they're both out until round twenty to twenty two. So that's either two. That's How between long? two and four weeks, both of them. Yeah. And I had a look at their draw for at least the the four weeks. They got the buy. Oh, sorry, the next six weeks. Sorry, the buy, the Warriors, Broncos, Storm, Roosters, and Dragons. That's, okay. the, that's the next games. And I think they, they'll win at least Warriors, Broncos, and Dragons. Storm Roosters, though. That's two tough games. Yeah. I, I still think they're going to finish top four. I think, what are they, four points clear in the top four? Uh, I think them and the Storm are right up the top. And then there's a little gap. Yeah. No, Is that right? Yeah. Well, no, they're, they're eight points in the top four. <clears throat> yeah. So they're, they're finishing top four, I think. Yeah. No, me too. Okay, same. Another question from Maxi Bob. Sorry, um, what Queensland side would win the expansion bits? So you got the Brisbane Bombers, Brisbane Firehawks, Redcliffe Dolphins, Ipswich. I had a look at the Firehawks today because I'm pretty sure they're in the box seat. They think that they have eighty million dollars in uh, assets and they will operate out of a seven point five million dollars center of excellence. So I don't know about the other sides, but that sounds pretty attractive for an NRL, like if you're coming into that. Um, 
I know Redcliffe have a long history in the Q Cup, and I would I like the sound of a dolphin rather than a firehawk in the NRL, but I think the Brisbane Firehawks are in the box seat there. All right, yeah. I'm just going to have to agree with you there. I'm going to go with you. Just go Ipswich. Ipswich. The Jets? Is it the Jets? Yeah, it's the Jets. Which which one do you like the sound of the best? The Bombers, Firehawks, Dolphins, or Jets? It either be Firehawks or Dolphins. I hate the Firehawks name. Yeah. Eh? I think it's, that's the lowest out of all of them. That's nah, not too bad. Alrighty, uh, Isaac Rusty is the future bright for Reese Walsh after RTS leaves for Union. Uh, the, mate, it's brighter than the sun. The bloke's an absolute star. Yeah, no, nah, he's gonna have a good career if he can stay healthy. I think he's going to play Origin next year, and he'll be even better. Him and Sam Walker will be even better with a f- full preseason behind him. I think. I think Sam Walker's got to got to gain a bit of weight, surely. I I know I said weeks ago that that Trent Robinson is going to t- like beef him up a bit in the off season, and he'll come back better than ever next week. Mm. I said that. I did say that. All right, well, you're just the guru, then, are you? Yeah, All right. I am. Andrew Backhouse, opinion on Hayes Dunster. Do you think he is a bit disjointed from the team? I'm going to leave that to you. You're you're the power fan. Oh, my opinion on Hayes Dunster. I mean, he's a good young player. I don't think he's disjointed from the team. Like, disjointed how? Like, well, I, I've watched a little bit. He seems out of sync, I think. I think there's a, it's, he's only a rookie. It was his first. He only played a few games with the team. Um. Just give him some time. So you don't think uh, you don't think what's her name? Fergo deserves another opportunity. Mm. We'll see how this bloke goes. We'll see how Dunster goes. And I mean, if he's doing the job, then yeah, Fergo. I mean, he, he had his time. I heard Fergo was playing pretty good in the New South Wales Cup a few weeks ago. I did hear that. All right, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. If if, if he's playing well enough, you got to earn that spot back. So. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's doing there, but only time will tell. So just give Hayes Dunster a little bit of time, um, maybe just to build that th- those combinations that some of those other players have had for a little while, and we'll we'll see where that goes. Okay, um, okay. if you could play NRL, if NRL, sorry, which club would you want to debut in, and what would your wage be? I love this question. Um, selfishly, I'd like to play for the Cowboys, but if I'm thinking with my head, I debut down in Melbourne, right, in a good system. I learn good fundamentals down there, right? Yeah. And um, they pay me. I'm a child prodigy, so they pay me decent money. I reckon about 150k a year. And then rookie season, I get brought into uh, game three in State of Origin to help bring the Shield home. First ever uh, Victorian to debut in Origin. Somehow, I <laughs> grease a couple of fingers there, and I bring it home, but not to New South Wales or Queensland. I bring the Shield home to uh, Victoria too. Just steal it. I just steal it, and then we fortify the borders, and we don't let anyone come in, and we keep the shield forever. That's my plan. I think New South Wales and Queensland would probably team up then and bomb Victoria. Doesn't matter. We're fortified. We're fortified. We get all all the AFL fans. We say AFL's better than NRL, and we get them all, and we just take New South Wales and Queensland down, and then Victoria just <clears throat> dominates that whole... Uh, what side is this of the country? South. The whole, all the way up to the north. From south all the way to the north will become the new Victoria. That's what I think. Where are you at on that? Well, here am I at. I'll just play for Eels, mate. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I thought about that. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah. That's quite a story Good. you got there. Mate, I dreamt about it last night. I'm going to dream it into reality. i got to wind the clock back, though. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, a couple more questions for an Andrew. Yeah, no, no, not a good answer. Um, do you think Eels still have to prove themselves, even though they lost to the Panthers by one? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, they should have won that game probably, but they're still they're still missing um, Reed Marnie, and I think he's a huge part of what they do in attack, especially his kicking game. So. I wouldn't read too much into it. I think there's still a chance. Mm. Um, oof. I think there's. They should have. They 100 percent should have won that game. I mean, they were coming up against an understrength uh, Panthers team. So I don't know. Just just if they beat those teams that they're supposed to, like like you say, though. Like you. Say. Yeah, I know they. 
they seem to just oh, that that's a game they should have won, right? And you know what? You win that game and then forever in the back of your head you you know we can beat the Panthers, you know what I mean? Yeah. That gives them huge confidence going forward. So you're right, they should have won that game, but still think they're a chance. Still do. All right. Nice. All right, so we've got a we got about five questions here from Jacob J. McGuigan something, whatever that name is. All right, dream holiday. Uh man, I love to travel, so I've been to like America, New Zealand, Singapore, Bali, Thailand. Been to Singapore a couple of times. Um, haven't been able to go anywhere since like COVID's been kicking off. But I would love to go to the Maldives, sit in a bungalow and drink me life away. That's what I'd love to do. Mm. Nice. My dream holiday is I want to go to Japan uh, when it's cherry blossom season. That's that's my dream holiday. Those, those, I did not expect that. Those pink trees when it's a little bit snowy. Mm. goes for a ski down Mount Fuji. That'd be beautiful. Okay. Mate, I've been I've been like your best mate for like a decade. I've never heard you talk about the cherry blossoms in Japan. No, in well, my whole life. okay. Well I've told literally everyone that that's that's the only place I want to go for holiday. You haven't it's told Japan. me? I've told we you. Know. We, we, no, we sit here and talk for like hours on end a week and you've never told me about the cher- the cherry blossoms in Japan. I'm sure I have. You never have. I'm sure I've told you at least once. I think I think you're talking. You can shit. ask any any ask anyone you know. Be like, oh, where, where does Danny want to go for holiday? And they'll say, oh, Japan, cherry blossoms. Okay, move on. All right. Uh, what's, what's your favorite beer though? Uh, right now, Great Northern, but it does change. But Great Northern, and I've figured out why I like it. Why? I tell you why. Because I feel like the mid strength and the full strength taste almost the same. And you don't find that with a lot of beers. Like if you go to the mid strength option, it tastes different to the full strength option. Mm. So I like the fact that if I go to a beer, if I go to a pub and I'm driving, I can have that and know exactly what it's going to taste like. Then I get home and I've got them in the fridge and I have it. It tastes the same. Lovely. All right, oh, so I'm probably the same there. The reason why it just tastes good. Because of the cherry blossoms. Japan, yeah. Yeah, Japan. My favorite beer is Japan. Cherry blossom yeah, season. that's good. Okay. Uh, all right, random one, but favorite dinner dish. Uh, I like pizza, but if we're talking cooking, uh, that TikTok pasta, the feta with the cherry tomato spinach, and I throw some capsicum in there, uh, uh, a little bit of salt and pepper, lovely. You roast that up about 35 minutes at 180 degrees. You put some pasta on. Uh, you boil that pasta with a little bit of salt in there, and then you combine the two when the pasta is cooked and the feta is like, a little bit melted. You mix that up. Beautiful. All right, mate. That we just needed the dish. We didn't need how to cook it. Well, I just I give it all. Uh, well, what do you like? like you can't cook. I don't cook. I can because I cannot cook. Like I'm. Well, I can cook, but it just takes me a bit. Mate, you cooked one day at my house, and it took you like two and a half hours to cook a potato bake. It was absolutely unbelievable. No, well, I cooked a potato bake and chicken schnitzels, and it did take me <laughs> nearly three hours. It was unbelievable. What do you? What's your go-to if you have to cook? What's your go-to? <sighs> Mate, I have not cooked in about a year. Katie does all that stuff. That's her jobs. Um, oh, but my go-to, I don't have go. I don't. I don't cook. I, you I, just buy. Yeah, literally. If I have to cook, I I just tell Katie, look, I'm gonna get takeout instead. What's your go-to takeout? Pizza. Nice. Love pizza. Alrighty, uh, day jobs for both of you guys. So I'm just a picker at a warehouse. I just pit, pack pallets and uh, throw them on a truck. Pretty boring. But I was a disability support worker for eight years before that. Yeah, and that's what I do now. Support worker. I've been doing that for, what? You only did it for eight years? Yeah, I've done it for eight years. Oh, yeah, I'm on to my fifth year. Nice. Did you, do you put out fires too? Put out flyers? No, put out fires. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm um, I'm a retained fiery. Yeah, yeah. That you're a good man. I'm a good man. But Jeez. anyway, I was trying. I was going to keep that a secret. But anyway, no, mate, you wore a fire bloody shirt on the podcast before. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any uh, Suns or Bucks for NBA Finals? I got the Suns. I'm going Bucks. We'll put money on that. Ten bucks. All right. You throw that in the kitty when you lose out as well. No, you'll throw that in the kitty. Um, By the way, if anyone, if, if you're watching for the uh, giveaway that we're doing, I've said too, if Denny does manage to get eight from eight, no matter, like, even if I get eight from eight, 
I will double whatever's in the kitty at the top. We'll confirm that. Can confirm. Alrighty. All right. Uh, next question. So, Jeremy Newton, 10. What do you think of the Tony Stag sex tape? Did you say that? Yeah, I thought it was awful. Not a good one. Like, probably two, I mean, if you, two out of 10. If you... um. If you did make a tape, like you never want it leaked, but that one, you don't want that one leaked. Jesus Christ. Um, not too good for Katoni. Huh. Um, I think if uh, the shoe was on the other foot, another little pun there, uh, I think Katoni would be p- uh, public enemy number one if the shoe was on the other foot, like if he leaked it instead of her. So screw her. Yeah, no. Nah, and she's not even that good looking. Like, what do you think, Katoni? <laughs> Uh, all righty, C Colin zero eight zero one. Pick three plays for any club to go to the Bulldogs that would make them a better team. Probably literally Brandon Smith. Any Brandon three Smith players from any teams. Brandon Smith, Dale Finucane, and I was going to pick a half, but Matt Burton's already gone there. So Brandon Smith, Dale Finucane, Matt Burton. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Uh, Jamin Sarko. Think about him. That's a good player. Uh, Kane Evans. Sam Williams and Kane Evans. They're a better team. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you obviously turbo. You get turbo there. Just him by himself. I think they need a hooker. A hooker. They just re-signed Marshall King, I heard. Yeah, they did. For two years, I think. Yeah, I don't know about that. Alrighty, MG Talk Sport. Thoughts on the hammer playing origin and any other changes to the Queensland team? I think uh, it's very similar to the Moses situation, you don't really have anything to lose by picking the hammer. If he comes in, performs, you've uh, fixed your center situation. And if he doesn't, you're in the same spot you're in now. You still need a center. So I think there's no harm in picking him. Hopefully he plays well. Big task against Tommy. But any other changes, I think you've got to find a way to get Brimson and Walsh in the same team. I think they're two high-quality players. I don't know why they didn't entertain the thought of uh, picking Walsh this time because... He's um he's playing this week, so I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather have Walsh, Walsh than Brimson. Honestly, Brimson, what are you doing, mate? You played in the middle of game one and got towed up. Got absolutely oh. destroyed in the middle. But anyway. Speaking about destroy, what is your dog doing? Oh, well, she's just destroying something with Katie's. <laughs> but I'll buy, I'll, I'll buy Katie. Uh, it's like a workout thing. And well, I can't, well, I'm I'm feeling so. There's nothing I can do. Sorry, Katie. All right, I'll let this happen. I'll go buy a new one. I'm gonna clip that and send that to Katie. Don't send it. But you you're letting it happen. Well, what do you, what do you want me to do? You want me to go stop <laughs> no, on? play on? Play on. Um, yeah. Anyway, next next question. My whole favorite Indigenous jersey. I like the Rabbitohs one from last year. I thought that one was gun. Uh, this one from memory, I think Melbourne's was really nice. I was going to say Melbourne on Broncos. I like those two. Um, hope for Broncos after winning against Sharks. Yeah. I mean, it was a step in the right direction, but they still got plenty of work to do. And if the last two years have shown us anything, they're about as consistent as my diet. Your diet's consistent, though. Consistently yeah. bad. Zing. Zing. <laughs> Jeez. All righty. Uh, question from, oh, here we go. Tori Bonham. I wonder who that is. Uh, why is Danny worse than me at tipping? Firstly, I'm not. And yeah, I think you are. I think Tori's above you on the ladder, so that's outstanding. Well, no. So just based on that, the ladder, you are worse than her at tipping. I can't be. It's not possible. Well, that's how it is, mate. No, well, oh, that's because I'm a late bloomer. I like to come home strong. Oh, go away. I'm like the bunnies of um, last year. Start off slowly, but... Finish strong. All right. You end up getting beat. Yeah, but I finished strong though. Okay. All righty. Uh, Ethan. <laughs> oh, hula. Whoa. Holy, holy hand. Uh, do the Knights make the top eight if they have their spine for the rest of the season? Um, there are a chance. There are a bigger chance now that everything's going on with the Dragons. But, I mean, there's a big log jam. Oh. I think 8th to the 13th is separated by two points. So... I think they can get there, but they've got a lot of team to con- contend with there. Yeah. Um, I would, had a look at the, the draw for the next – until the end of the season, actually. So they've got Storm, Roosters, Raiders, Broncos, Sharks, Bulldogs, Titans, and Broncos. So it's a pretty easy run home. 
Oh, the especially the back end of that. Yeah, that's like, a good. That's a good finish. Like from one, two, three, four, five, six. Like the, the last six rounds, it's all winnable games for them. So I reckon that they're gonna, if the spawn can stay healthy, they're gonna um, take one of those those um, okay. spots in the top eight. Well, that's good for my prediction because I did have him in the top eight and it wasn't looking good. So. <clears throat> I think we we both had him in there. I think I had, who who else did you have? I had the Warriors. Did I? Did I have... didn't have the Warriors. I had the Titans. Ooh, and the Titans are ahead of the Warriors at the moment. I didn't have the Warriors. I, I thought they'd be middle of the road. Yeah, well, you pretty much just got on there. Yep. Alrighty, Karim's 64. Do you think Manly have a chance at winning, winning the Premiership? Yes. They're a top, eight for, uh, the top four side for mine, and with Tommy in your team, you are a chance every week. I think their defense was a little bit patchy, but them keeping the dogs to nil was a really good sign. Yeah. Well... Their defense, what do you mean? The defense is patchy when? Like, they, they were still giving up, even to the Cowboys. I think they give up 18 points, and they gave up 18 points a couple of weeks in a row there. I think what what they give up to the Titans in the first half, 24 points or something, that's not good enough. Mm. Well, Turbo was so, Yeah, that's true. So, I'm saying, it was patchy before. They kept <clears> the Bulldogs to nil. That's a good sign. Now they can build on that. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm calm, sorry. Calm down, bro. Okay. Uh, Deacon Kelly, 19. Gutho making origin camp. Love it. I was really surprised he didn't get picked over Campbell Graham as 19th man in the first two. So I wasn't shocked to see him brought in. He's a quality player. Good on him. Uh, I don't know why Nico Hines is ahead of him. Come on. Yeah, I don't. I, I feel like it's just to get him in the camp. I, like uh, Campbell Graham was never going to play, and Nico Hines is never going to play. So He's 18th man. Yeah, he's 18th man. I can't believe that. Cannot believe that. Nico Hines, because there's a chance he could play. There's a chance he could get on the field. That blows my mind. Yeah. Like, come on. You'd rather but have, have they confirmed me. their squad fully yet? Like, is have they cut their squad down yet? I think that's the... Yeah, I think the squad was confirmed. So, because you know how they have to cut, like, players close to kickoff? Yeah. Closer to kickoff? Yeah. So, they wouldn't have cut players yet. So, there is a chance that... um. What's the name? Gutho. One of those 19 or 20 can take that 18th uh, man spot. Come on, so, Yeah. Come on. Right. Oh, I was shocked that Nico Hines was there. Yeah, me too. But right. good on him. He's, he's having a good year, but he, they are around very good players. Like, we'll see we'll see what Nico Hines is like when he's at the Sharks next year, really. I think he'll still do well at the Sharks. Just not. He won't, I hope he does. He won't do as well as he's doing at the Storm. Well, they're, they're the gun side. Like, I don't think you can expect anyone to do as well. Yeah, personally. All righty. A uh, few more questions from Dean Kelly. Grand final predictions. Yeah. Um, I've got to stick to I said the Storm and Roosters wouldn't make the grand final. It's not looking likely, so, but I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to go Penrith Manly. You know what? I think that if the Storm versus Penrith before the grand final, they're going to win. Well, for that to happen, really, they can't finish top two. Storm or Penrith? Well, Storm, I mean, Panthers, um, to finish top two, they're missing both the halves for the next few weeks. So they could possibly drop to third or fourth. But I th- I'm going to say Manly Storm. Manly, Manly yeah. Storm Grand I like Manly Penrith. And then I like what you said about if Penrith and the Storm meet in a prelim final, that would be huge. Mm. That'd be crazy. And Penrith would be right up for it. So that, that'd be really good to see. But I think if they finish top two, I really think we're heading for a Penrith Storm grand final, but I want to stick to what I said at the start of the year. I didn't think the Storm could make the grand final. They've easily been one of the best teams, if not the best team this year. So it's not looking good, that old prediction. No, no. Well, I said they wouldn't even make the top four the Storm. So. Well, that, that's a low prediction. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Anyway. There goes the dog. Yeah. I don't know Go bring her in, mate. Bring her in. Go grab her. Go bring her in. All right, all right. All right. What are we... What are our thoughts on the blowouts? Um, I think, honestly, I think there's a massive skill gap right now in the NRL. I think the new rules, especially the changes this year, the taking away of the scrums, the six agains on the 10-meter rule, which I really don't like. I think that's made it even worse. Uh, I think the NRL have to invest in development, I think. Uh, stronger pathways, bring back the 20s. Uh, Phil Gould talks a lot about that. He puts the 20s being taken away as the reason for the skill gap. I think the Storm, 
Uh, Panthers, they obviously had a very big development in their um, feel good, went out there and put together a pretty strong pathway for their uh, players. So that's probably why they're succeeding. But I think the, the new rules really help, hurts the skill gap in the NRL. So I wonder if we could just wind them back a little bit and go back to the 2020 rules where you still have the six again. It still speeds up the game a little bit, but you just bring back some of the scrums, which I think they fixed the scrum anyway by being able to move it into the middle of the field. And you just keep a penalty for the for the ten meter rule, and hopefully that can fix a little bit of the blowouts. What are your thoughts on the blowouts? On the blowouts, oh, I don't really like them to be honest. You yeah, know, well, a, a big reason for the blowouts are the rules. Like I heard you were just yeah. talking about them. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what's doing with, with. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's just a. There's a massive skill gap, though. You think that there's only four teams that can win the comp. No one else can win the comp. Who are those teams? I think it's Manly, yep. Parramatta, uh, Manly, Parramatta. No, Manly, South, Penrith, Storm. and Storm. I think they're the only four teams that can win a comp. And then you got South and uh, you got the Parramatta and the Roosters just below that for mine. But really, the Storm are pretty much the benchmark. And when Penrith are fit, yeah. they're right up there too. All right, yeah, nice. Alrighty, so uh, will can you know? Who is your favourite player in the NRL? Uh, Tom Trevojevic is my favourite. There was another player. I, I said it the other day. Angus Crow. Yeah, I can't remember. No, I can't remember. I said someone asked me this on Instagram the other day, and I told him two players. I can't remember the second one. Hmm. I can't the second one. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I'm lost for it. I'll go Gutho the King. He's my favourite player. All right. He's just all effort. All effort. All effort. Alrighty, Gallagher Parker. Uh, do you think Cleary and Luai's injuries are setbacks for the Panthers? Yeah, big setbacks, but they'll be all right. Yeah, huge. Yeah, I think they'll they'll be okay. Alrighty, uh, JS J Scucks. I think that might be twenty three. Um, any chance of the Broncos, the West Tigers position on the ladder? Uh, do you mean like going up the ladder? Uh, I don't think the Tigers are going anywhere. The the Broncos might move a little bit, but. They won't be making the eight or anything. Yeah, neither of those teams will make the eight. No, the the West, the Tigers are dreadful, and the the Broncos are too. But at least the Broncos showed some fight on the weekend. I haven't seen that from the Tigers, you know, long time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Alrighty, uh, Logan Kunish. <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, you should post montages and moments on YouTube. Yeah, we're again we're still learning and growing. We this like takes up all of our time already. Like. I've got to go to work pretty much as soon as we stop fil- filming this. Plus, I've got to do an hour of editing at some time. So we're still trying to learn and grow. Um, yeah, I'd love to post like shorter clips and stuff and do all that crap. But yeah, it's taken up a lot of time, man. Yeah, mate. We'd, we'd love for this to be our, our jobs. But, yeah. You know, this doesn't pay the bills. They'll pay the bills. Yeah, you got to pay, pay the, the bills. bills. That's right. All right, we got a, oh, there's a few questions from Lincoln. Okay, so because the Olympics are still on, do you think that the World Cup will go ahead? Uh, it's a bit different because the Olympics, they're going to be a closed off, obviously a closed off village and everyone has to be 100% vaccinated to go. Um, so the Olympics are a lot, lot bigger than the Rugby League World Cup. The thing with the Rugby League World Cup, we've got to get play, uh, people to come to our country and our country's um, uh, laws at the moment aren't really allowing for much of that. So I think they're, they're leaning towards not having the World Cup go ahead. I think there's a decision coming on that soon. If they can't bring over all the players for the World Cup, why not play like a Nines World Cup like they did a few years ago? Just bring in a few players. You could probably field like enough sides just from the players that are already in this country in a Nines World Cup. So maybe that's an option. Uh, could be. I, I think the World Cup will go ahead, but it will, it's just pending on what happens with COVID. Yeah, but I think they need to make a call on it soon and half the country is in lockdown, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know either. Alrighty, uh, do you like the shortened rounds? Is that like the buy rounds? No. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I it's it part of the game. Is. Yeah, yeah. So, don't I don't, I don't like I don't like Origin being played on a Sunday. So, if this is the if, if this is what we have to have for that, I'd rather this. I like it on a Wednesday. Mm. Me too. Okay, is Danny happy with? Uh, sorry, is Danny happy about Guffo and Camp? Yes, yes, I am. How happy? Should, I'm pretty happy. He's the best player in the world. Uh, at the moment, like so, do you like lay in bed smiling about it? No, I don't. I don't lay in bed smiling about it. I'm never so in you're bed. Somewhere, 
You're never in bed. I'm always not up. the people's bed. Not the people's bed. No way. All right. Uh, who actually calls Danny. Danny the people's host besides himself? Well, Danny. Logan. Um, <laughs> Listen here, Logan. <laughs> uh, from where I'm from, that's actually disrespectful. <laughs> All uh, right. Where I'm, there's, mate, if you see me around town, every, everyone's like, oh, there's, there's the people's host. There's people, yeah, but they don't yeah. make eye contact. That's what I heard. There's no eye contact. They bow. <laughs> they bow. All right. Uh, where did Danny get the name The People's Host? I don't even Danny? know. I'm not too sure. I think it would, I think the people just said, do you want to be the host? And I said, okay, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, where does anyone get the name? Like, Superman didn't name himself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The people did. I mean, yeah, the people did. It's, a, it's. It's thrust upon him. Mm. Mm. So I didn't choose this life. This life chose me. That's true. All righty. Uh, Josh O'Connell, who's the dark horse in the NRL currently? Uh, probably Manly. Yeah, I'm going to say, if you're going ladder-wise, they're sitting like sixth. So Who's who's a team outside the eight that you could see making a run into <clears throat> the eight? How about that? All the Knights. Mm. If they can stay healthy. I think, I think the Warriors. I think the Warriors now with Matt Lodge, their four pack, like Matt Lodge and Adam Vanilla Blake. They still got Reese Walsh and RTS. A lot of strike back there. I think they can make a run if they can just be consistent. All right, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dues, best lock ever. That's really tough. Really tough question. Uh, Jason Tamalolo has got to be in the conversation, but there's different errors. Like. I always loved J- Dallas Johnson. Now he's not in the conversation for the best lock era, ever, but I think it's who you like. Look, who, who do you think? It's hard. Uh, look, I really like Jason Tamalolo. I thought Craig Fitzgibbon was good too back at the yep. Roosters. He was one of the first goal kicking forwards. It's hard. Yeah, I think it's out. Out of the people that I've seen, it's out of Craig Fitzgibbon and Jason Tamalolo. Those two. Okay. Alrighty, uh, North Queensland. That's the one, isn't it? I get that oh, right. Oh, yeah, you got it. You All got right. it. Danny, why are you so beautiful? Mate, there's a lot of effort that goes into into how I look every day. Yep. About an hour in the mornings, fixing up my hair. All that but you're never stuff. in bed either, so. Never in bed. So Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're learning a lot about you. The cherry blossom. Yeah, the cherry blossoms. You don't, you, I didn't, you, you do sleep. You just don't go to bed. No, I, I sleep, but I'm awake. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It's the people's host. It's the people's sleep. It's the people's sleep. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Isaac, 14-09, modern era dream team of the NRL. Oh. Like modern as in like from 2000 like the... or, oh, well, uh... or 2010 to 2020. JT's got to be there. Okay. So I was thinking about this earlier. So I think Billy Slayer okay. at the back. Oh. I think one of the wingers is Brett Morris. I couldn't figure out the other winger. Oh, Tommy. Tommy. Mm, I was going to have him in the centers. All right. I was going to have oh, him, no, G- him, him and GI in the centers, mate. Well, then you... Okay. Okay. And then... Right. I so we need I, another winger. We need another winger. All right. You can think of a winger because I thought of, of this just the spine. So I went... Well, we could play RTS on the wing. Okay. Yeah, go RTS on the wing. I went um, Jonathan Thurston and it was a toss-up between Cooper Cronk and Nathan Cleary, but I chose Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, it is right. he, in in the 2010 2020 he won what three premierships three or four yeah. um at the front row i went matt scott and paul gallon okay for hooker cam smith obviously the back row was boyd corner sam burgess and jason town at lock that's that's what i thought of done he's done it it's the people's team it's that's the people's team of the modern era Anyway, next. Um, <clears throat> Will Stark, can I have free merch? Oh, well, you're the first one to ask. So if we ever make a shirt, remind me and we'll give you a shirt. Done. Yeah, we'll give you a shirt. All right. It's me, Hayden, one, two, three. Oh, okay. Yeah. This was this was the question about the halves pick. Should they have picked South Halves over Mitch Wise and Jack White? Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. And M. Teach, where do you rate Ruben Garrick on the NRL hottest list? Oh, he's a smoky. He's good. Know. He's a good looking bloke. No, no, he's a good no. looking bloke. I don't think so. No, he's just. I'll not... put him over Madison for mine. I'll throw him over Madison. 
Are you forgetting That's... Madison's godly body? Oh, well, he's got he's got big arms though. To who, be fair. who would you rather choke you, Madison or Garrett? <laughs> both. I'll have at, both. The, at the same time. At the same time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. All right, let's do our tips. All righty, the tipping. All right, let's just get. We're just going to pump through these guys because um, there's only four guys. Earn that bread. There's only four Got to get that bread and leave. Right. So right. Manly versus Raiders. Oh, no origin players. Where, where is it at? Manly? It is at Four Pines Park in Sydney. Yeah, so that's that's Brookvale. Is that Brookvale? Yeah, they've, they've changed the name again. Uh, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go Manly. Yep, me too. Uh, Rabbits, Cowboys. Okay. Rabbits. I'm going Jesus. Cowboys. Let's go. <laughs> uh, doggies versus Roosters. I'll go the Roosters. Yeah, me too. And Sharks versus Warriors. Oh, that's a tough one. Is that a um, shark pack? Yep. N- n- I the Warriors. I was going to go Warriors as well, you dog. All right, I'll go the Sharkies. I'll go the Sharkies. Make it interesting. All right, and that's it. That's that's all the games for the weekend. All right, thanks, guys, for tuning in. This was uh, this is really fun. I really enjoyed this. Love the Q&As. We're going to merge the Q&As and the tips so we're not doing two shows. Um, we will be back here on Monday with our Origin Preview. Danny, the people's host, will be in the house. Not in my house. He'll be in his own house. Oh, yeah. But we will be doing it. Don't forget to check out everything we do on our social media, please. And thanks for tuning in.